promulgated by proclamation of the governor. In other words, this is administrative authority. This is an administrative order that has the effect of law that is uh, referred to in um, the contempt statute. Um, contempt does not refer specifically, and rather does not refer only to court orders. Um, under the statute itself, you have the first part about the court order, which is usually used in domestic violence situations, but you have the second part. The person is guilty of a crime of the fourth degree if the person purposely or knowingly hinders, obstructs, or impedes the effectuation of a judicial order or the exercise of jurisdiction over any person, thing, or controversy by a court, administrative body, or investigative entity. And so here through the uh, governor's uh, re repeated executive orders, including uh, the one that this defendant uh, willfully violated, um, is effectuated by, you know, by the governor's executive authority, but also by um, administrative authorities, including the Department of Health and the Office of Emergency Management, um, which uh, are two administrative authorities um, that uh, direct action by all political subdivisions underneath it, including uh, law enforcement and investigative body. So here we have a situation where the governor of the state has directed law enforcement to um, enforce these, these actions, um, has, uh, and there's, there's jurisdiction in two parts. There's one over individuals such as Mr. Bell, who willfully disregards these orders. And there's also jurisdiction over these stores. Um, all three of these businesses had an obligation to comply with this court's order. The defendant's actions um, were not merely then contempt of an order on sort of a solo individual basis. They were um, hindering, impeding uh, these businesses' ability to abide by that order. And um, so that's really what takes it from the level of a mere disregard disorderly person's offense to the fourth degree contempt by hindering, obstructing, and impeding the effect of this executive order, of these sort of, uh, these orders which, which really have a greater force than an administrative uh, rule would um, uh, as the investigative entity, in this case, um, either the Attorney General's office, which directs these actions, or, or the Pleasantville Police Department, which is meant to enforce them. Um, it is their authority uh, that um, that this defendant was not just disobeying, which would be a disorderly offense under the 9A statute, but hindering, obstructing, and impeding that effect. Um, he was told multiple times over the course of the days that um, all he had to do was was correct his actions, um, and the, the the charges would cease. And he was he was willful. In, um, uh, in his continued disobedience. And so that, that goes beyond uh, a mere disorderly obstruction. And, and that's what takes us into the fourth degree contempt arena. Thank you, Mr. McKelvey. Ms. Sanigan, do you wish to be heard further? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Give me a moment, please. This is the uh, application of the state of New Jersey to detain uh, Robert A. Bell on charges stemming from complaint warrant 0119W2020-000220, uh, wherein the uh, defendant is charged with a violation of 2C colon 29-9A and a variety of other uh, disorderly and petty disorderly persons offenses uh, with respect to his apparent and willful knowing and purposeful a violation of executive orders with respect to the current COVID-19 emergency, specifically that the defendant uh, wear a face mask with, within the premises of certain essential businesses open to serve the public. Uh, the defendant uh, having been twice charged before on summons and released uh, for further compliance apparently or to go about his business, uh, nevertheless persisted and it would appear that his 
conduct uh, is in violation of 2C colon 29-9A, uh, which is a crime of the fourth degree, in as much as that his conduct, as described by the prosecutor and as set forth in State's Exhibit 1, impeded the effectuation uh, or the exercise of jurisdiction over any person, thing, or controversy by a court, administrative body, or investigative entity. It would appear that based on the governor's actions as set forth in his most recent order, and in addition to the authority vested in him in the legislature by the uh, Emergency uh, uh, Declarations Act, that uh, this defendant was in contravention of that order and thereby um, prevented the exercise of jurisdiction over any person, thing, or controversy, respectively the uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, premises, which was bound to comply with the governor's order, as well as the exercise of appropriate authority by law enforcement, uh, given charge by delegation to carry out the governor's uh, orders as indicated, uh, thereby giving this court the ability to determine uh, that the state, giving the benefit of all reasonable inferences, which can be drawn from the facts and circumstances, and applying the law as recited by the court, that this defendant is an eligible defendant who committed the offense as charged, namely that he was in contempt of the executive order uh, as set forth in the complaint warrant, a crime of the fourth degree, and that further he committed trespass, a disorderly person's offense against the property of Dunkin' Donuts in Pleasantville, that he further uh, attempted to uh, uh, resist arrest, a disorderly person's offense, and that he further obstructed uh, the performance of law, a disorderly person's offense, and that uh, he violated uh, the provisions of A colon 9-49A and A colon 9-49H in contravention of executive emergency orders. Having found probable cause, may I hear the state on detention, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the, the PSA, um, the, this defendant does not have a prior criminal record, and so this is normally not the sort of situation between a fourth degree crime and, and no prior criminal record that, that we would be here. But the PSA uh, does not recommend release because of this defendant's uh, repeated arrests, uh, uh, one after the other, uh, without resolution of those charges. So um, as I stated in previously, within 24 hours to incur uh, three different uh, charges uh, for the, the same pattern of behavior, uh, particularly in light of the current public health emergency uh, is something that, um, that, that does warrant detention. Um, under 162.19.7b, uh, a danger to, to the public safety, and especially see uh, the, the concerns about obstruction of justice. Um, the, the danger is that this, that this defendant, um, by his own words, sees no public health concerns with his actions. Um, the, and, th and that obviously is going to uh, cause danger uh, to the community. And then under C, the defendant again, by his own words, um, has indicated that he does not consider uh, these orders valid, does not consider the public health emergency itself valid, and we are left with, with no choice but to conclude that the only thing that will ensure that he does not continue to present a public emergency, uh, excuse me, health risk and continue to obstruct justice is, is his detention. And the reason that we can know that is from the defendant's own words himself uh, from Sunday uh, April 12th, when he told the responding officers at Dollar General in Pleasantville, quote, if you want to stop me, you'll have to put me in jail. Nobody wanted to put this defendant in jail. It's he, with his own repeated conduct and his own um, uh, willful obtuseness that has led us to this situation. And so uh, for those reasons, I believe that there is no amount of uh, monetary bail or other conditions that will ensure the defendant will not continue to present a danger to the community under B and will not continue to obstruct justice, specifically this order under C. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Uh, Ms. Senegan, may I hear you on release, please? Yes, Your Honor. So as the state um, <clears throat> acknowledged, this defendant has no prior uh, criminal history. Uh, he's never been involved with uh, law enforcement before. Um, so naturally, he has no failure to appear or, or anything of that nature. Um, and most of these charges uh, 
with the exception of the one fourth degree are um, disorderly persons, petty, petty disorderlies. Um, as, as far as the events as they happen, I, I know that the state um, laid out a full record of, of what they have based on their reports. But um, I'll just clarify, as, as far as the, the episode at Dunkin' Donuts, um, when they said that my client had refused to leave, um, once he was outside of the store, he did want to leave, um, but he had asked for his umbrella. He'd left it inside the store. Um, and then once he did get his umbrella, he was leaving the premises. Um, uh, and, and he had said, you know, maybe I'll go to Wawa. Um, he hadn't exactly made up his mind where he was going to go. And he actually started to leave um, as requested. And he was walking in the direction of his home, which also happened to be the same direction as the Wawa, which is why uh, I believe the officer believed he was going to the Wawa and, uh, and, and arrested him when, in fact, he was actually going to just go home and figure out what he was going to do. Um, I think that, that based on the, the comments that my client has made, I, it, it's clear that, um, you know, in, in these times, which are certainly confusing, um, ex extremely stressful, there is a wealth of misinformation and conflicting reports about um, whether this really is a pandemic, whether this is valid, whether the governor's orders are valid. You can go online and find numerous articles of, of conspiracy theories. Uh, there, there's so much mis misinformation going around. Um, and I think, unfortunately, my client um, got some of that misinformation, didn't fully understand uh, what was going on, whether this was something that was valid, whether the governor actually had the ability to order this. I know there's been a lot of reports that, that he's, he's overstepping, that this is unconstitutional. Um, I have had the chance to speak with my client. Uh, we, we had a lengthy discussion about this, about uh, the COVID-19, about the authority that the governor does have, that this is valid, um, that regardless of wh what he feels about whether COVID-19 is actually a pandemic or not, that there is a valid order that he has to, to follow, that he would be required to wear these face masks and that it can be enforced. Um, he understood that. I, I think uh, I was able to, to answer all of his questions and, and that he now does understand that this is a valid order from the governor, that he would be required to wear a face mask. Um, and he expressed to me that um, he would now comply, that if he had to go into a store, that he would wear a face mask in the store, um, that, that if he didn't want to wear a face mask, that he can make arrangements to have relatives uh, go to the supermarket to get supplies for him. Um, but I, I think I was able to really explain to him, and he now understands. So based on that, um, and the fact that he has no prior criminal uh, history, that, that this is very out of character for him. Um, I think that there are conditions that can be placed on him. Uh, he is a lifelong resident of um, Atlantic County. He's lived in Pleasantville and his current address for the past four years. Um, so certainly he's not a, a flight risk. Um, and as I said, I think now that he understands um, the actual order, what it means, um, and that it is valid, that, that he is willing to now comply. Um, so for those reasons, I, I think that, that he can and should be released. Are there any medical, um, um, physical, or other conditions uh, that the court can, can or should consider regarding this defendant, Ms. Senegan? Um, I know that he has um, indicated he has been uh, treated before for a, a bipolar disorder, um, but other than that, I don't think that there are any um, there are any other conditions or any physical conditions. Thank you, counsel. Would you please give me a few moments to review your submissions? Yes, Your Honor.
The court has carefully considered the submissions of the parties and the arguments of counsel, have reviewed and closely examined the public safety assessment and the allegations as set forth in the complaint warrant, and mindful of the uh, difficulties presented to uh, the general public, to the administration of, of government, as well as uh, the difficulties presented to this defendant and other citizens. Uh, nevertheless, the court finds by clear and convincing evidence that no amount of monetary bail, non-monetary conditions, or accommodation thereof would reasonably assure the defendant's appearance in court when required and the protection of the safety of any other persons or the community, and therefore pretrial detention of the defendant is hereby ordered. My reasons for this decision are as follows. The nature and circumstances of the offense is charged. On their face, these charges are not serious. However, given the defendant's repeated and willful violation of the laws regarding the current health emergency and the orders that have been implemented to protect the safety of the public, including law enforcement personnel, the employees of essential businesses, and indeed, even the health of the defendant himself, detention is necessary. The defendant's repeated lawless behavior indicates <clears throat> a, a dangerousness above the mere degree of the offenses. The court has also considered the weight of the evidence against the defendant, considering any admissibility concerns. That evidence includes the personal observation of law enforcement, statement of witnesses of the employees at the essential businesses, and video which may have been recovered from those premises. The court has also considered the history and characteristics of the defendant, including his physical, mental, family ties, and the like. The defendant has strong ties to the community, is a lifelong resident of the county. He has had prior treatment for a bipolar condition. The court has considered that the defendant has no prior adverse contact with the criminal justice system and therefore no failures to appear. The court, however, has considered and given great weight to the fact that at the time of the offense or arrest, this defendant was on release. Uh, pending disposition of charges. Most concerningly, the defendant had twice before within 48 hours been cited for the same conduct and was released. The court has also considered the nature and seriousness of danger to others posed by this defendant's release. The defendant's contemptuous conduct demonstrates a danger to public safety. Nothing short of detention at this point will ensure public safety. The court has also considered the release recommendation of pretrial services using the risk assessment instrument. Release was not recommended. The court has carefully considered, weighed, and balanced the recommendation of pretrial services and, in fact, and has found the public safety assessment very weighty evidence supporting detention. This case presents during the course of a declared public health emergency in this state. During the course of this emergency, the defendant has now three times not only ignored the executive orders which have been implemented to protect public health and safety, but has thrice willfully flouted the clear provisions of the orders, thereby endangering not only his health and safety, but the health and safety of the community. The state has clearly shown that only detention at this point will protect the safety of the public, law enforcement personnel, and others charged with operating and implementing the uh, executive orders for the protection of society during this emergency. Bennett has seven days in which to appeal my order. He'll be detained pending further disposition. Council, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, this matter is adjourned. Judge Cunningham will take over the balance of the detention hearing list. I'll sign off at this end. He'll be back to you in just a few moments. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge.